So I've been talking about uh, the current developments in terms of preventing type 1 diabetes. And I think the most important thing to remember at the beginning is that the need for this is still extreme. That even though there have been tremendous improvements in delivery of insulin and monitoring of blood sugars, and there have been tremendous improvements in this technology, the take on this in clinical practice has been rather disappointing because if you look at the average hemoglobin A1Cs in the United States and around the world, they still do not nearly come to where they ought to be from the recommendations that have been given by the American Diabetes Association. And so prevention of diabetes still remains of paramount importance. Unfortunately, the prevention trials to date have largely been unsuccessful, but not completely so. Although the uh, diabetes prevention trial was negative, the ended trial and other prevention trials didn't show that they were able to actually delay the prevention of diabetes when looked at in the standard uh, statistical analysis, there was some evidence from the DPT-1 trial that oral insulin may have had an effect on delaying the onset of type 1 diabetes in individuals at risk. Maybe one of the problems, though, is that we haven't had very good ways of differentiating the stages of diabetes progression, either with metabolic markers, cellular markers, or immunologic markers. But this technology has, has improved considerably. And it seems as though we are able to now redraw the, path the pathogenesis of type 1 diabetes to describe a fairly chronic process without a lot of happening, a lot of beta cell killing going on, and then a rather fulminant process that occurs near the end of, uh, of the pre-diabetes period and just before an individual presents with hyperglycemia. The fact that individuals who show early signs of abnormal glucose tolerance and who are autoantibody positive will almost invariably develop type 1 diabetes suggests that treating these individuals with agents that have been used for patients with diabetes is appropriate. There has been progress in treating patients with diabetes. Some examples of drugs that have worked include anti-CD3, CTLA-4IG, anti-CD20, and uh, LFA3 IG. So these drugs now can be looked at as being potentially useful agents for preventing the disease in those who are very close to developing frank hyperglycemia. There are prevention trials that are ongoing right now. The best way to get involved in these is through the TrialNet screening program, the TNO1 trial, or also called Pathway to Prevention. You can participate by referring your patients to a TrialNet center or an affiliate, or perhaps you're in a, a TrialNet affiliate. But there is even an online way that you can uh, have patients screened. There are kits that will be sent directly to the patient so that they can have a screening test done. 